перше дні війни ми на фронті. Робимо свою справу чесно та з душею. 2-2-5. Рапів до раю не пускають. Russian drones needed for target identification and artillery guidance, as well as FPV, were unable to function. The rapid Ukrainian offensive in the Kursk region took Russia and Western analysts by surprise. In a few days, Ukrainian troops captured more territory than the Russians had in several months. The success appears to have been achieved by mastering a new style of warfare, writes Forbes. The Ukrainian armed forces have reportedly disabled Russia's network of aircraft type reconnaissance drones, effectively blinding the command. This may have been done with the help of new FPV interceptors linked to air defense radars. Secondly, during the temporary shutdown of surveillance, short-range jammers were deployed to the front line. They were programmed based on data previously received from electronic warfare intelligence. They learned the main frequencies of our border radio networks, drone control frequencies, and prepared powerful jammers that suppressed our communications, writes a Russian blogger quoted by War Translated. This was possible because the area was considered low priority and was not equipped with the latest equipment. In Ukraine, the drone war against jammers has become a constant arms race, with new jammers appearing for every step taken to evade jamming frequencies. It appears that the drones in this sector were not up to modern standards. As a result, Russian drones needed to target identification and artillery guidance as well as FPV were unable to function. Even the dangerous Lancet loitering munitions were partially affected. Drones are the primary means of stopping armored attacks. Recent data suggests they account for two-thirds or more of tank destruction and video footage shows entire armored assault forces being knocked out one by one by successive FPV strikes long before they reach enemy positions. By concentrating sufficient jamming capabilities in the Kursk sector, Ukraine neutralized Russian drones, allowing its armored vehicles to cross open territory without being destroyed. But how did they cope with Russian troops dug in behind defensive lines that had been built for two years? Analysts ask. Ukraine has filled the skies with its own drones, a constant barrage of precision-guided UAVs flying in swarms. OSINT analyst Roy notes that in recent weeks, Ukraine has used powerful drone bombs to punch holes in the top cover of Russian trenches and dugouts. Experienced FPV pilots can fly through these holes and clear the trench below. Perhaps significantly, some of the footage shows Ukraine's new dive bomber drones. Another group of Russian servicemen have been taken hostage in Russia's Kursk region after the Ukrainian army surprise incursion in the area this week. The images were distributed on Telegram channels. Left without any support in their military position, the soldiers decided to surrender to Ukrainian soldiers. This is not the first group to surrender to the Ukrainian army. As many as 300 Russian soldiers were taken hostage in the first two days in incursion, according to media reports. On August 7, Ukrainian defense forces captured over 40 soldiers of the Russian armed forces in Kursk. 
The day before, Ukrainian troops captured 35 Russian soldiers on the border of Kursk region. Ukraine launched a surprise ground assault into Russia's soil with troops and armored vehicles on Tuesday. Russia said that up to 1,000 Ukrainian troops took part in the cross-border attack. Ukrainian troops have reportedly advanced 25 kilometers into Russian territory.